This video will go over how to import a territory file. To do that, uh, we're going to click on this red puzzle piece at the top with the green plus sign. And we're given two options. We can manually create a territory, and I'm going to show you how to do that in another video. Uh, but this is if you have an Excel spreadsheet already set up. This first screen just gives you an example of what a spreadsheet might look like. If you're importing a list of zips, just have a list of the zips with the Z, uh, zip code header and then have a territory name column and then have the territory name next to each zip code that they cover. If you're importing a county territory, just make sure you have three columns, one for the county name, one for the state name, and one for the territory column. Once again, territory name goes next to each county that they cover. If you have the header of county and state, it'll make your life a little bit easier uh, if you have that in your Excel spreadsheet before you plot. So what we do is we just plot uh, browse to wherever our data is, and I'm going to first start with this National Territories by County. We always want to stop at this Select Data Locations uh, screen and make sure that the columns are identified correctly. In this case, I have a county name header, and that's identified correctly. The program could figure that out. We have a territory name column that we'll use in a moment, and then state abbreviation, and the state is identified correctly there. So we'll go ahead and click Next. Creating territories. I always pause on this last page to make sure that the territory name column is identified correctly and that we're using the proper geography. Uh, if, it, if I didn't have a territory as my header in Excel and it was something else, then I would just choose that territory name column from the pull down list. So we'll click Create Territories and it'll automatically fill those in with colors. And when we click Done, we're going to be presented with our data window. The data window automatically pulls up whenever you pull in data. And what's nice about the data window when you first uh, pull up a territory file is that if you wanted to, you could change the colors. So if you didn't like the color yellow, you could switch it to something else. Uh, we'll make it a purplish color here. We can also move our mouse cursor over any one of these lines and click on this little data window icon, and that'll swing us over to a list of the counties and the states that are within each territory. We can also click this pull down list and see that, uh, our list of territory counties. At the end here, we have our export button if you ever want to export uh, anything out to a CSV file. If you close your data window and you want to get back to it, it's this icon at the end uh, right next to the green car. So I'm going to just. Now we'll talk about uh, ways that you can modify your territory a little bit as far as the appearance goes. Whenever you import a file, uh, the information is going to be listed here in the map and data box. Now that I have a territory file that I imported, I can uncheck and recheck if I want to see it. Also, I can do things like I can turn on my states layer and see those, uh, the state words uh, with their borders. I can also click on this little settings gear next to territories and click on my general tab. And this is where I can make a layer transparent. So if I wanted to, I could turn off my uh, states layer and I could look through my territories and see my streets, the underlying street data. Um, I can also, in territories, I can hide internal boundaries if I wanted to. So let me just click hide internal boundaries under territories. And then that makes all the individual counties disappear just so it's a more seamless looking map. If I click back on my states, I can go to labels and I can change the appearance of those labels. So if I wanted the black lettering, I could change that here. I can uh, take off the bold or italicize or the outline, and I can also make them smaller if I wanted to, if they were getting in the way. In territories, if I swing back there, there is a, an intersections tab that I just briefly want to mention. And what this means is when you import a territory file, let's say you have a county and it's assigned to two different people in your spreadsheet, maybe it was done in error. We automatically allow territories to intersect in the program because we don't know if you want them to intersect or not, so we allow that on by default. We also have the second option where you can highlight a territory intersections on the map with another color if you check the box. So if I did have a county that was assigned to two different people or two different territories, I can make it stand out with red, or I like to make it stand out with a pink or a white or black, something that really stands out when you're looking at a national map. So just keep that in mind. And once again, that's in territories under intersections. I'm going to close out of this for now, and I'm going to delete my territories, and we're going to import a zip code territory file next. So I'm going to delete this data set as well. I'm going to turn on my zip code layer. 
So, to import a zip code territory file, same process. Click on that puzzle piece, and then click next to plotting data, and we're going to browse to wherever our spreadsheet is. In this case, I'm bringing in something called Colorado Territory. We'll click next, and next again. And all I care about here is my zip code and my primary state, and that I information is identified correctly. Before we proceed, I want to explain what this little box is. So this box says ignore point only, no boundary zip codes. I want to take a moment to explain two different types of zip codes. So there's a boundary zip code, which we all kind of know from our hometown. Um, basically, it's a, a boundary zip code that can be filled in with a color. Sometimes you get uh, another type of zip code within the boundary zip code, and those are called point zip codes. A point zip code is a building that receives a lot of mail, but is not defined by a boundary. So maybe you have two gigantic post offices uh, within one zip code, then those individual buildings might have, might be point zip codes, and then the they might be within a boundary. The reason why I bring this up is sometimes that they can cause headaches when you're working with old data and you're trying to import it. A point zip code might be assigned to one rep, and then the boundary zip code that actually contains that point zip code is assigned to somebody else. And so you get that overlap, and that's where we go back to that, what we briefly talked about before with intersecting and checking your work by checking that uh, box. If you 100% trust your data, feel free to uncheck this box and you can bring in your zip codes. If you double check your work and things don't look right and the territory map is really messed up and you don't really want to go through and eliminate all your point zip codes you, from your data set, you can choose to ignore point only, boundary, uh, point only zip codes. And this will give you more success for your territory map if you have bad point zip codes. So now that I've explained that, we'll click next. And then next to creating territories, very similar to what we did before, my territory name column. This time we're doing it by zip codes and we'll click create territories. Automatically fills in that information uh, and I can quickly see uh, all the zip codes that are within that territory. I mentioned before how we can make territories uh, in states transparent. We can also do that with our zip codes. So if we come over to manage map and data, click on that little settings gear, we can swing this transparency bar for zip codes way over so that we can start to see through it. And we can do the same thing with our territories, make that a little bit more transparent. And then once we do something like maybe we turn off our states layer and we turn off our zip codes, then we can start to see uh, that underlying data that's within our territory. I hope this helps. If you have any questions, please reach out. Uh, otherwise, thanks and have a great day.